I'm going to, uh, going to talk to you about soils and their origins and characteristics. And to me, limitations then towards optimal production, which will in a way focus on soil compaction, new trends in soil physical management, dredging and traffic control um, in the tree crop um, industry. Um, oh, going backwards, sorry. Um, let's go forward. As you know, pecans are planted for a lifetime, so optimizing production involves many as aspects, but a strong, deep, so when we're looking at the soil, a strong, deep root system is key to a high-yielding, productive tree consistently producing high-quality nuts, which you require in the end. Um, Natural resources often exert limitations toward op optimizing production, and we must find ways to overcome these limitations. And um, it's not as if the pecan industry is unique regarding this. Um, it applies to everywhere um, you go, um, nowhere you will find optimal conditions. Many soils of the main pecan production areas of South Africa are of windblown origin and compact to high densities which disallow good strong root development. Poor root systems tend to limit growth and production, cause alternate bearing and complicates um, irrigation and nutrition management. So this presentation will focus on, a, on new trends in soil physical management with the aim of optimizing production. Um, so, I said we're going to talk about soil physics, um, so we'll go subsurface like the moles. Um, soil, water and air, I will not even um, spend, uh, say anything about water um, and focus on, on the sandy soils and air. How do we optimize peak in production given the resources we have? Um, and what can we learn from the greenhouse industry, which is the most intensive um, industry you will find. The people put in um, shade nets or plastic um, into houses or glass houses to be in control of climate. Um, you can cool, you can eat, you can do anything. And as far as nutrients, they supply it constantly obviously in a balance at the concentration um, with the aim that you get maximum uptake, maximum growth and water on the other hand, um, in a way the same. You have an irrigation system where you can pulse and run the system as wet as possible. But um, mostly in the, if you work with normal uh, medium um, soil, then you run into an air problem. So what do the greenhouse industry do? They buy air at a huge cost. They use an inert um, artificial growing medium, but in a way well aerated so you can, you can apply nutrients and water as much as you like. Chris, uh, we've got a question. Uh, you refer to a deep root system. Is this what pecan trees need to produce optimal? or will a shallow root system on a ridge work? No, in the end, um, I don't think, um, thanks Willem, thanks for the question. Um, I don't, a shallow root system complicates the whole, you're sitting on a small reservoir. Um, so in general, you need a 80 centimeter good deep root system, um, to, to get optimum production. I think it's been proven over time. Um, hopefully that answers the question. So the origin, and <laughs> this is just um, for interest sake, but the, the origin of the soils of the main peak and production areas, just for interest sake, um, the Kalahari, a large percentage of the Kalahari group sediments deposited in the Congo Basin 
And you can see on this map Namibia and the Kalahari, and the geologists um, want to say that um, the, the Kalahari soils or the sand have been blown from the Congo, and there you can see on this map Another feature, uh, another interesting fact, um, which in the during lockdown I had time to Google. And uh, you know, when you go to Namibia, I read a book. They say the highest quality diamonds um, are found on the Namibian coast. So the origin, and then they would say that the Namib desert. The origin is the Orange River, the Kharib. Predominantly, there you can read, the ultimate source of sand for the Namib desert dunes as proved by whatever all these geology terms, um, that, that it came from the Lesotho Highlands or from um, your area. So the diamonds um, originated from um, Jan Kemptorp and Hartswater and <laughs> wherever. There you can see at the bottom, um, the, is that the Harts River, the Val River system, and here the Kharip or the Orange. Um, and they would say that all the diamonds, all the sand for the, the Namib Desert um, originated from there. If we say then the soils of the Northern Cape and Western Free State, and on the right that picture, Wolmeranstadt, Makwasi, Blumhoff, um, the Blumhoff Dam, um, that the sand mantle or your soils of, is of wind-blown Aeolian origin with affinities to the Kalahari and or Val River basins. And what's unique about it, it's got a high fine sand, fine sand fraction. And then you would say soil requirements for pecan production. Um, the pecan tree grows and produces best in fertile, well-drained and deep soil with a loose to medium texture. Um, I'm not sure if the fertile is so important because these days we can apply nutrients um, anything we want. And often what I've seen is that uh, um, the fertile soils along the river, they give you these water shoots, which is not often desirable. Um, so how can we overcome the limitations um, we got from nature? And this is a mechanical analysis from Hartsmater, and I won't say whose soil it is, but this is generally the sandy soils. So it's got 88% sand, of which fine sand is 80%, which is Aeolian or windblown, with 12% clay. So if we go to the, the texture, which um, the texture triangle to classify what soil we're working with, percentage clay, salt, and here at the bottom, the sand. We are right to the left bottom, um, so sand. We cannot get more sandy than this sand mantle of the peak and production areas. Here, um, if we say about soil bulk density and what does it imply, um, it is the, um, the dry soil um, per unit or the mass of the dry soil per unit of bulk volume, including air spaces. There at the left at the top, you can see the pictures um, to, to, uh, to describe the soil. So we're plus minus on the right. Soil bulk density can be affected by texture, management practices, soil compaction, and organic matter. So now, if you look at the right-hand side at the bottom, and um, if you say the soil type, the soil, uh, the soil bulk densities of various soils, you see the sand there at 1,71 grams per cubic centimeter. Or to understand it better, it's 1.7 tons um, per cubic meter of soil. 
And if you go down to clay, it is 1.2 um, tons per cubic meter. So a, a huge difference. So that's what we call soil bulk density. Why? Maybe you will argue with me. Remember that that is without water. If you add water, obviously it changes. But in a dry state, so the sand is much more compact or, and it's got a higher bulk density. So what does sandy soil and high bulk density tells us? There's less space for water and air. Coming back to the importance of air is um, in the greenhouse industry where they buy air. So if we want, if we want to apply nutrients and water um, and, and get maximum production or growth, um, we need air. All right. And what do we know more is free, a free water table can form if there's an impermeable layer at depth um, and limited adsorption of water and nutrients because of the low particle surface area. Obviously, with the sand much uh, with the clay, um, the, because it's, the particle sizes are 10, 15 times smaller than the sand, there's much more surface area for the water and nutrients to absorb to. So in the end there, um, in red at the bottom, if we start thinking about resources, then we must keep in mind that, um, that I would say from a soil physical um, view that air is in short supply. And maybe that's the, the main point I want to make. All right, now mechanical analysis. Um, what does it tell us? Um, what we must know is that the sand, the uniformity in size distribution, so the sand particles can pack very neatly and can reach very high bulk densities. Um, that's what we saw in the previous slide. High bulk densities will impede root elongation and can be measured by penetrometer resistance. That fixtures on the right um, is actually Leopold von Eistian, so that, that picture must be 40 years old, but um, that's a penetrometer. It's a steel rod you push into the soil and it's got a gauge where you can measure the resistance which um, the soil exerts to the rod going into the soil. And you've got different um, points there that you can screw on. But, all right, from studies in Artswater, Penetrometer resistance measured in megapascal, above 1.2 megapascals, the root elongation is influenced negatively. The critical strength where root growth becomes seriously impeded is 2 megapascals. Um, right, um, here you will see a graph um, that was, sorry it's in Afrikaans, but the, on the left hand side, is the soil depth and the resistance. And when we push this, um, this previous penetrometer cannot, but um, Philip Meiberg from Nitvorbe, he's got a nice one, which draws a graph while you're pushing it into the soil. Um, but you can see the, the two megapascals or 2000 kilopascals and once this line crosses this, you know, um, you don't even have to make a, a profile, but, but you can see um, it crosses the line and you will know there's compaction in the soil. On the right, the, the picture you will see is a sandy soil. Um, those are citrus roots. They only uh, penetrated um, about 30 centimeters and then they turned and they won't go any deeper. Um, so there's a compaction layer at 30 centimeter. Right, now coming back, and it's not as if it's new, <laughs> or compaction on the sandy soils. Um, you can see these people, um, Professor R. de Twee, Rol, Rolf, Rolf, de Twee Berger in the old times, Chris de Prier, um, 
Is it Pete Boata? I don't know. I haven't met him. Um, Alan Benny. I think Alan Benny grew up in Artswater. Um, but he also farms beacons there and Bain's play outside of Bloemfontein. Um, I visited them some years ago. But, and more studies. The effect of soil compaction on root growth and nutrient uptake by maize. So they focused a lot on the, the dry land areas, but other research were done in Artswater. Root characteristics of different crops as affected by mechanical res resistance in fine sandy soils. The influence of particle size distribution in soil compaction. So this has been um, well researched over many years and right from the old times. Um, right, the causes Obviously, so a sandy soil by itself will compact um, and the compression by wheel traffic from agricultural equipment. So you can drive on the top or um, if you plow the soil, the wheel um, in the open furrow and the right. Um, and on sandy soils, it has shown that the first wheel traffic after the tillage operation will recompact the soil to 80%. So now you will tell me, so that's why we're not preparing the soils because um, the, the first um, traffic again over the soil will recompact it. That's, the, the, yes, it's the truth, but all right. So you can get a smear layer um, or a general compaction um, over depth. Layers with high penetration resistance decrease rooting. Water content of the wetter the soil, the more the compaction or the more the effect. The higher the fine sand fraction, like I said, the deeper the compaction. Up to 40 centimeter at depth, um, whereas heavy soils uh, maybe 10 centimeter underneath the tractor wheel. And flood or sprinkler irrigation tend to compact soils. Chris, uh, sorry to interrupt. We've got another question here. Uh, do you know who sell pen penetrometers? Any idea of price? Um, you maybe uh, we will have to come back. Um, Johnson Soil Augers um, in Johannesburg. You can maybe Google them. I know in Poch of Strom in the old times that they made penetrometers. I do not know which is the company, but I think we'll have to come back. I've been, um, I, um, Philip Byberg has got that nice one which draws the graph on paper. And, um, um, you know, you put a paper onto it and then with a pencil as you push it into the soil, plus minus like my, what my graph looks like, because that is done with Philips um, penetrometer. Um, I've got the OK to copy it, which I haven't done yet, um, but maybe it is something to consider. Uh, if you've got the guy who asked the question, then we can send him the info. Um, when we have it. Um, um, all right. Adverse effects. Decrease rooting depth and density which, lose, which leads to reduced crop growth. A decreased nutrient uptake, obviously. Decreased transpiration rate. Um, decreased plant available water and decreased nutrient um, storage capacity. And the water movement in the soil. If you've got these layers, those pictures on the right, when you when you wet the soil um, and you have these layers, various layers of of density, the water tend not to move from the one layer to the other layer, um, and it, the soil becomes saturated in that top area, and only then the water will start moving. So. You've got an imbalance between water um, and air availability. On this slide, you can see that um, the saturation taking place on top of the compaction layer. Um, 
and which causes saturation with the uh, end um, poor aeration, uh, poor balance between water and air. Um, the influence of soil compaction on production, um, it will lead to restricted root growth and will thus influence the following. Poor aeration, further enhanced um, irrigation scheduling. Um, the soil water reservoir is obviously um, with the shallow roots, um, very shallow and very small. That makes um, leaching by over irrigation of water and fertilizers. Um, it will lead to it. Um, saturation on top. We said that on top of the compaction layer causing poor aeration. The inherent supply of storage and storage of nutrients. Um, obviously, when you're working on such a small root zone um, or shallow root zone, um, the, it's very easy or it's very difficult to maintain optimal um, nutritional balances within the root zone. And all these will lead to increased alternate bearing. So poor and shallow root development forces irrigation and nutrition management to adapt to very small root volumes. Pulses and water enrichment, you're making life difficult for yourself. Um, or yeah, um, management just becomes um, about impossible. Um, then um, I got this slide from Philip Mayberg from Need for Bay. Um, that what are we looking at when we make a profile pit? Um, we must realize that the roots anchor um, the trees, they absorb water and nutrients and store reserves and produce hormones. Root development must be within the wetted area of the irrigation system for control and performance. Focus irrigation on the active root zone where 80% of the roots occur. Um, if you follow a two, um, a two zone strategy with the active roots and the buffer, you can always fold the buffer from time to time, but focus on the active root zone. The four most important criteria for an efficient root system is the lateral distribution within the wetted volume of the irrigation system. So if it's drip or sprinkler or micro sprinkler, it should be within the wetted area. The depth at least 60 centimeter. It can be up to a, a meter dependent on soil type and irrigation management. In well aerated um, soils, you can get um, um, roots up to a meter deep, um, the active roots. Number of fine roots, um, less than two millimeter, the more the better for optimal water and nutrient uptake. All fine roots are feeder roots, no matter the depth at which they occur. Heavier soils in general have less roots than sandy or gravelly soils. Um, the quality of the fine roots, um, they should be healthy, brown, and with pecans they tend to be black as well, but they should not be slimy. Right. Um, Soil compaction and how to manage it. Um, if you do no soil preparation and you sit with 30 centimeter deep um, roots, um, it complicates irrigation. Like I said, it complicates irrigation and nutrition management with poor production and alternate bearing the result. Um, if you delve plow a planting hole, um, you must realize that you're only making, um, let's say, um, um, 10 percent of the total root system or the canopy um, area of the tree um, and it's not better much better than the first option um, this slide i want to show you the influence of rooting depth on your um, water storage capacity um, 150 liters as against um, 7,500 um, or with drop um, a very small um, reservoir that you must work with when you have shallow roots. 
the irrigation, how to manage it. Um, this slide I just want to show you um, for drip or micro or the the effect um, of localized soil preparation and the planting hole. Um, sprinkler irrigation or micro sprinkler irrigation should wet at least 50% of the soil volume. And why? Because we do not want to irrigate more than once or twice a week wet uh, the top soil um, because the evaporation component just becomes too big. Um, with drip, um, because we do not wet the surface area, it's um, no problem to wet every day. Um, but you should still be wetting around about 30% of the root um, volume. So if the plant, uh, the trees are planted 10 by 10 and you have 100 square meters available, you should be wetting around about 20 to 30 um, square um, meter to, to have a manageable irrigation system. Right. Um, peak in production, and obviously you will realize what I'm getting at, is um, here you will see a typical picture um, in the sandy soils in Artswater, where you move close to the tree up and down and the tractor, the wheel traffic in both directions, and typically you sit in the end with a, um, with a maybe four square meter um, area that's not being compacted by wheel traffic. Um, and typically, the picture on the left, typically what you get in the end is a 20 to 30 centimeter deep root system that you must try and manage. All right, so are there ways to use the resources of the peak and production areas with regard to limitations offered by nature? And I'm asking, can we overcome soil physical limitations? Poor aeration, create and maintain poor spaces. Compaction, are there ways to overcome the negative impact of shallow root systems? We must find a balance between soil physics, agromechanical operations and irrigation. Many um, areas experience problems and um, for example, um, in Brazil and Argentina, you will only find a planter and a harvester in the shed. This is under dry land conditions. They have heavy, deep red soil, so they got rid of all the other implements and um, they do no tillage. Um, can, can this work for us? No. Um, if we look at the dry land industry, um, in the Northern Cape Free State, Northwest, the first implement you will find is a ripper. So the people have tried no tillage or minimum tillage, but in these sandy soils, the compaction um, still remains a problem. So we must adapt our practices to the soils we have. Um, prevention. Um, the thing is to distinguish between uh, the active root zone um, and wheel traffic zones um, if you want to, to overcome the compaction. Practices to protect the active root zone against compaction, control traffic, um, under no circumstances any wheel traffic. Because like we said, 80% um, of the, your effect will be lost um, after ripping with the first wheel traffic over the sandy soils. Obviously, organic matter um, will the roots or um, the roots of a cover cover crop will prevent uh, the recompaction, and we must do it right from the establishment phase until you have a well developed peak and root system. Um, then, ridging, ridging has traditionally been used to grow tree crops on shallow and poorly drained soils. The new trend in tree crop production in South Africa um, or the, the industry is to a large extent moving to ridging, regardless of crop soil characteristics or climate. So it's not only the sandy soils, even the heavier soils um, everywhere people are moving um, to ridging. So here um, is some pictures 
on the left to the top, you will see those ridges. It's a statistical trial being done by Dr. Franz Kreer on avocados. And he's not got nothing. He's a post-harvest um, specialist in, in avocados. But he says, I need a strong deep root system to produce high quality avocados which I can send abroad, um, export, and they must ripen uniformly and high quality um, when, when they get abroad. So, and, but it's a statistical trial being done um, in Sanin uh, and different, so everything were cross-trapped um, before and some and one of the treatments is no ridging as against, I think, 20, 40, 60, even up to one meter height of the ridges. And left bottom is, um, I think it's nectarines in the Kobockefeld area. On the right is macadamia, it's also up in the north. And then right bottom is sandy soil citrus in citrus dal. Um, right, and a few years ago I asked myself, um, what about um, that we investigate um, the effect of ridging? So I asked Philip Meiberg, Dr. Philip Meiberg from the ARC, Nick Forbein Stellenbosch, that we go and investigate the effect of ridges have on the different tree crops and how it influences the tree's performance in general. Philip was involved with the original work carried out by Leopold van Eysten in the old days in the 80s to generate guidelines for soil preparation, which is in a way the basics of um, soil preparation these days. I know that uh, Dr. Eduard Hofmann and Johan van Seil, they published a book last year, um, which also deals intensively with soil preparation um, guidelines, um, right. But the current guidelines mostly based on the work that was uh, their original work that they did. So we started out in the Western Cape, um, Eastern Cape, and then moved to the North with the two main um, purposes of root development and size of the root zone, resistance um, to, um, of the soil with the penetrometer. Um, this um, graph and pictures um, is young macadamia, so I think four years old, um, in Nelspreit. The top picture, so the whole um, orchard development were cross-ripped and then were reached, the bottom picture. There were a few rows left. Um, the producer just said, all right, let's see if we don't reach it, what's the result? But in general, so on the penetrometer resistance graph there, you will see um, that <laughs> it never um, exceeded 2,000 kilopascals. And you, those, um, that ruler there is 10 centimeter increments. Um, so you can see those profile pits are way um, over one meter depth. And you can see the fantastic root development. This is uh, old avocado orchards next to each other um, under drip in Sanin. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's not name, but you can see on the graph the old orchard the, where it was not rich. Um, there at 25 centimeter, it went over 2000 kilopascals, um, which is not desirable. And the orchard is also showing it. As against where they reached more currently, um, it, the penetrometer goes into like a jelly or pudding. <laughs> um, right. Citrus in Hoodsprite. Um, there you can also see maybe those soils were originally too shallow and that's why they reached the soil. 
And you can see there at 55 centimeter depth uh, on the flat soil um, where it, it went across the 2000. But um, so um, we've got enough rooting depth. These trees are producing, it's uh, 100 hectare, um, I think lemon development and producing on average around about 90 to 100 tons um, per annum. So the question is, can we afford to farm if you're on um, a tree crop which you're planting for a lifetime? Can we afford um, to farm on such a 20 centimeter deep root system? Um, right. So the conclusions regarding the rich investigation um, were that, sorry, Just having some um, water in the absence of wine here in the Cape. Proper soil preparation is key to good root development. Riches definitely have more advantages than disadvantages. We see root systems are much healthier and as a result, so are the trees. It seems that the trees grow much faster in the early years and they start producing earlier. Um, what I want to say is um, that the original guidelines um, spelled out is still intact, um, but there's a tendency to reach regardless um, because of other advantages. Right, so why, how to design, how to construct and implement? Um, we should differentiate the root zone from the wheel traffic zone. Uh, ridging prevents wheel traffic from damaging the active root zone. It enforces controlled traffic. Um, so many people would say, I, I struggle to, to prevent the people from driving onto um, too close to the active root zone. Um, so the ridge in a way enforce control traffic. Um, it must be that the tractor cannot get up onto it or ridging removes compaction or layering and ensures proper physical soil preparation and mixing of chemical emollients and organic material. Roots will grow where bulk density is lowest and where there is the most oxygen. Riching concentrates fertilizer and organic matter in rich topsoil and places it in the tree row to optimize the volume available for active root development. So in a way, you know, over many years you've built up the, the fertility in the soil. So now you take um, the other 30 centimeter and you put it on top. So you have double the fertile soil. It increases the soil surface area in the orchard up to 30%, which increases the volume of aerobic soil available to tree roots. Chris, sorry to interrupt. We've got a question. Yes. Can you still reach an established orchard? Uh, we're getting to that um, topic, so yes, we will. I will discuss it. Um, the design of the ridge. And I'm not a specialist, there are specialists out there, but um, rich design will be a compromise between tree density, orchard practices and implement availability. The dimensions should take a row width and the wetted area of the irrigation system into consideration. Which I said previously with micro sprinklers, um, it should be approximately 50% of the row width let's say 40 to 50%, with drop irrigation around about 30%. Um, right, applied irrigation water should be concentrated on the ridge, thus applied to the active root zone. So it's not necessary to wet the whole area anymore. Um, right, ridge height can be from 20 to 40 and the width 3 to 4 meters, which is maybe um, rather stick to. If you want to go micro sprinkler, um, then um, that 40 to 50 percent. Um, so in the end, 3 to 4, 4 meters um, width, 3 to 4 meters. Um, and 
You don't have to build a mountain, but you should take the fertile soil and put it on top. Um, it should be flat. flat. Now, um, if, if we're on hilly terrain um, and you need the runoff um, like that picture on the right, it should be flat to convex on top and concave in the work row to channel water from the orchard. But in the flat soils, well drained, it's not that big a problem or that um, necessary to do it. Ensure no wheel traffic in the plant row while making the ridge or after completion. No smear layers or abruptness in structure within the ridge. It should be um, what uh, homogeneous. Um, lower the roads, that's again, if you're on um, high slopes or what. Um, the construction, proper soil preparation need to be done before the ridges can be made. You cannot just make a ridge on compacted soil. It defeats the purpose. Cross rip is recommended. A mulierant should be applied before construction to ensure optimal incorporation and mixing. Any equipment can work as long as you apply the rules. Um, right. Um, I'm not um, there's I'm going to show you pictures of different um, methods being used or different equipment excavators um, and um, Preferably, they should know what they, it's a delve operation, it's a mixing operation, so you cannot just um, put soil on top of each other. Um, you can even use bulldozers or various. Here you will see a uh, disc, offset disc, um, and um, even graders. In the end, uh, reaching, you should do inspection. Dig a cross section to inspect the mixing of the soil within the ridge. It should be thoroughly mixed. Use a sharpened steel rod to inspect the result. No variations in the resistance when you push it into the soil. And here I'm putting that first picture of the sand, sandy soil with citrus. I'm showing that picture um, but Celexia Spress specifically. Why? Because that is um, on a ridge. So it just shows you if you're not making the ridge um, properly and you do not inspect it, um, there can even be compaction in the ridge um, in the making process. So be sure it should be uniform to at least on to 60, 80 centimeter, um, so that we can get good root development. You know, I've been to um, a place up in the north on avocados. They made these massive ridges, but in the in the past, it were always said um, avocado roots uh, they only grow on to 10 centimeter. If you um, scratch there in the leaves, you will see the roots right on the surface. It's not the truth. When you make these ridges, a proper ridge, and you allow the plant um, or you have a nice medium, the roots will grow on to 80 centimeter. Um, right. What about existing? Now the question, what about existing orchards where compaction is a problem? I discussed it with various people and they would say they're not afraid. Um, and we have um, some producers who are now ridging all their old orchards. Um, so experience has shown that it is not a problem. So again, through profile inspection and or penetrometer studies, determine the depth of compaction. Any loosening operation should be carried out deeper than the bottom of the compaction. Do the action in two years. First, one side of the tree row and the next year, the other side. Delft plow. So, if it's an excavator or what, delve plow the future active root zone with an excavator onto maybe pecans, one and a half meter from the tree trunk of the tree. 
remember the cover crop to maintain spore, pore space um, until pecan. The pecan root system have taken a full uh, active root zone. Um, so two aspects on the, the one hand, um, fine sand compacts um, by itself uh, and there's nothing. This is the resource we have, which we receive, which we're farming on. But and on the other hand, if we have wheel traffic or any traffic on top of that root zone, or on top of that soil, it will further compact, um, right? Hopefully I answer that question. Um, but I would play with it. I've seen avocado roots in um, KwaZulu-Natal. I've seen vineyard roots up along the Orange River on that high salt um, soils along the river within one year that you um, that you reached it. The root system has covered that total um, area, the, the reached area. Um, irrigation management. The irrigation system is planned for mature trees, although it must be able to take care of the younger trees. And you, as you know, the priorities regarding an irrigation system will change from young to mature trees. For the young trees, establish a deep, strong root system. Water use very low because of limited leaf area. Follow a more extensive approach to make sure that, and do not saturate the subsoil. Make sure that you're rather running too dry and that will ensure that a good deep root system develop. Um, for mature trees, find the balance between wetting of the active root zone and the wheel traffic zone. Micro sprinkler minimum, I said that, I will not say it again. Um, rich for mature trees, 100% of the water should be con concentrated um, in the active root zone. Right, irrigation. So rich and irrigation management um, it will take longer to irrigate past the root zone. If you have a 60 to 80 centimeter deep root system, there's no way, uh, it's, it's quite difficult to leach. Um, everything stays available. Um, right. Water and fertilizer can stay in the root zone for longer. It makes um, irrigation management easier with a larger reservoir. Am I live on both sides or which side? This side. <laughs> this is a little complex technology and no, not speaking to anyone. I cannot look you in the eye uh, and even see if you're seeing me. Um, I'm going to throw this thing into the sea after this presentation. <laughs> um, right. Um, I'm not going, I'm just mentioning it. Maybe it's a topic um, for um, the future, but irrigation for aeration. Um, how can, can we apply water and nutrients um, to get maximum um, growth and yield um, while maintaining aeration? Um, it is a topic for another day. In summary, it's a peak and nut production is a long-term investment and requires detailed development planning. The resource, we should look at our resources. Um, it should combine all aspects related to climate, soil and water to optimize. All other agromechanical processes should adapt to the above and not the other way around. The tail should not wag the dog. Can reaching and control traffic assist us in overcoming the limitations exerted by nature to optimize production? Um, I, um, what can I say? I do not know everything. I know we have the compaction. Air 
is the most important thing that we must think about. Um, and um, so I thought about my sons during lockdown. So I ask you to do not stop thinking um, and and find ways to overcome the limitation of these um, sandy soils which compact, which likes to compact so much. And I think um, maybe one of these days we should, um, if we're out of lockdown, we should um, undertake a tour wherever. Then we can drink some wine and look each other in the eye. Um, and go and look at other crops where uh, other tree crops where they're onto reaching already for a long time um, and but i trust you to find the answers um, but it's something to think about thank you very much and good luck chris thank you uh, very much um for uh, for this uh, presentation. Uh, we received one question um, from Johan Kutsier, um, where he said, in the lower orange and Karoo areas, we dig a hole with a TLB of two by two by two meter and cover the hole directly after di digging. So the soil layers is uplifted and the planting hole soil are well mixed. Is this method sufficient for a picking a tree soil preparation? Um, you want to answer you there? Um, let's take it in two by two is, um, and if we plant 10 by 10, so we have a uh, hundred um, squares, um, or let's make it um, seven by seven, 49, eight by eight, um, 64. So with the TLB, we're looking at two by two, which is four. Um, in the end for a mature peak and tree, if we're going to sit with four square meters um, and a tree canopy of 64 up to 100 square meters, I would say it is not enough. Um, it's, although it's like the picture I've shown, um, or the drawing that that for um, two by two, four square meters um, of a tree canopy, available tree canopy of 64, again, it makes life, maybe it's possible, but then it becomes something like um, hydroponics. Um, and in the end, I would like for drop 20 to 30 percent um, root system or nice deep root system and for micros maybe 40 percent that's what experience has shown to be a well or a manageable root system hope you I answered you there thank you chris and um, then we also had a comment from dup um, thanks dup for for uh, answering us back um on the Penetrometers, Jew uh, Coop in Potch, Potch of Struem, they do sell uh, penetrometers. Thanks, Dup, for that. Uh, we just received another uh, comment uh, which, which says Dickie John supply a soil compaction tester, same guys who supply the grain and moisture testers. See on Google, don't buy from PC Link. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for, for that comment as well. If there is no further questions, um, thank you again for uh, joining us today.